Hello everyone and welcome to the game you guys have been requesting ever since it finished. Uh, it's, uh, I mean, uh, and of course for good reasons as usual, it is uh, first board for the United States, Fabiano Caruana versus first board for India, second team India 2, uh, Gukesh, uh, and it's uh, the, the game everyone's pretty much talking about. I'm sure you guys know how to finish, but I'm not going to spoil too much for those uh, uh, who still uh, haven't heard the, the, the news, but... Um, uh, well, Fabis has been having an okay event. He lost two games so far. He lost to Abdusatrov and he lost to Sargisian of Armenia. Uh, and uh, th that usually isn't that big of a deal. But for Fabi, who was, you know, world number two for, for a very long time, he's a former 2800 member, uh, you don't expect him to lose two classical games in a single event. That's, uh, it just doesn't happen very often. Uh, but still, uh, he mostly lost those games. He, he really tried to push, to, he went over aggressive against Abdusatrov and, uh, well, uh, Sargisian went all in because he had to and he, you know, he, he, uh, he got a good game out of it, but okay. Now uh, we, it's a different story. It's United States versus India two, and uh, it's uh, quite a beauty of a game. Let's check it out. Fabi has the white pieces, and he opens with e4. We have c5. We already know Gukesh goes for the Sicilian defense. Uh, knight to f3, knight to c6, and now bishop to b5. Fabi goes for the Nish Medino Rosolimo attack. We have g6 by Gukesh. Uh, and now we have castles, bishop to g7, bishop captures on c6, b captures and rook to e1. So this is all very, very standard stuff. You've seen Magnus Carlsen play this with black many times uh, on this channel and, uh, you know, on other places as well. Uh, and here queen to c7. It's a move that isn't really uh, uh, main here. Uh, here knight to h6 is a much uh, more common, knight to f6 also much more common, e5 much more common. Uh, again, we've seen Magnus play e5 here many times. But here we have queen to c7 and it is much much rarer but not a surprise to Fabi as uh, he is one of the most prepared players in the world uh, we have h3 here uh, pawn to d6 and here comes pawn to e5 uh, grabbing more space in the center and this is basically a new move uh, uh, that uh, uh, that, that was ever played here. No one ever played e5 in this position. Uh, it has been reached many times. For example, c3 has been played. It's been played by Dubov. It's been played by Adiban. It's been played by Abdu Satro. It's been played. Uh, Magnus Carlsen defeated Anish Giri in the yeah, 2019 edition of the uh, Tata Steel India Rapid Edition. So c3 is the move that was played here. But e5 is a new move. So already, as of move 8, we have a completely new game. Uh, Fabi tries to surprise uh, Gukesh, and let's see how it uh, how it goes. Uh, D captures on e5. Of course, you can see that it's a pawn sacrifice. White cannot uh, recollect the pawn. It's uh, defended by the bishop and by the queen. Uh, so Gukesh now is up a pawn, but he has a double c pawn and he has a double e pawn. So what does Fabi have in mind here? He goes d3, uh, prepares to uh, develop the bishop, go after that c5 pawn. And here Gukesh immediately gives it back. Uh, just c4 says, all right, if you want to capture it, you can. But if you grab the pawn this way, then you have a double c pawn. I'm going to play a fat and my position is just great here. But Fabi didn't play this to recollect pawns. He goes knight to c3 and now c captures on d3. C captures and now knight to h6. A very interesting decision by Gukesh giving up the pawn right away. Uh, he could continue with something like bishop to e6 or even bishop to f5. But he goes for activity uh, instead of safeguarding his material. And okay, Fabi grabs the, uh, the pawn back. Knight captures on e5. This uh, is made possible by the knight now being on h6 as if the bishop captures then the knight is no longer defended. So knight to f5, Gukesh not counting pawns here. Uh, we have bishop to f4 uh, preparing some nasty discoveries towards Gukesh's queen and queen to b7 putting pressure on the b2 pawn and Fabi just plays knight to a4. So the b2 pawn is nicely defended and you constantly have to worry about what if the knight comes to c5 as it will come with a great tempo. So f6, Gukesh kicks away the knight here. Uh, I, this is your option basically. If you don't play it, then the knight remains on e5. I mean, yeah, and you don't want this knight here. So, knight back to f3, and here Gukesh castles. We have pawn to d4 by Fabi, and now pawn to g5. Chasing away the bishop, bishop to h2, and now comes h5. Gukesh uh, goes all in against Fabi. He's already on 7 out of 7. He has nothing to prove, and it went well for Sargisian when Sargisian charged with the white pieces against Fabi with g4, h4. 
so uh, how can Fabi uh, react to this? Well, he plays rook to e4, uh, very nicely done, uh, just guards that g4 square and the, the entire fourth rank, and Gukash plays queen to d7. Uh, it seems like you can maybe play c5, uh, open up a discovery towards the rook, but it doesn't work because knight captures here, just uh, attacks the queen and defends the rook, and even if queen captures on b2, then d5 comes, and now white's position is just much, much better. So Gukash says, all right, uh, queen to d7, and now we have queen to c2. Uh, now Fabi is ready to go after that c6 pawn. We have rook to f7, uh, Gukash uh, seemingly over defending the e7, uh, the e7 pawn, but it, it, it all comes with a very good reason. We have rook 8 to e1 now, putting pressure on e7, and now bishop to f8. This is a... This is an incredibly classy move by Gukesh, because if you look at the position now, it's very, very hard to, uh, to find a, an actual good move for Gukesh. For example, if you, you, you can't go rook to b8, even though you really want to because of the bishop on h2. I know you guys forgot about the bishop, don't, don't lie. Uh, and also, if you try something like bishop to a6, then you just allow knight to c5, attacks the bishop and the queen. Uh, it's just, I mean, the queen goes here, rook to e6. Uh, once the knight comes to c5 and the rook to e6, this is just resides for black. So it is incredibly difficult for Gukash to make an active move here, and bishop to f8 is actually a really, really good idea. So here, Fabi goes queen to e2, puts even more pressure on the e7 pawn, and now comes queen to d5. Now putting pressure on that uh, a2 pawn. So knight to c3 attacks the queen and defends the a2 pawn, and queen back to d7. And now Fabi has to make a choice, and it is a choice that could uh, uh, very well be, uh, well, the difference between losing this game and winning this game. And here Fabi plays queen to c4. He uh, grabs hold of this diagonal, uh, but the really tricky idea uh, that Fabi could have gone for is knight captures on g5. So uh, the idea is that after f captures, you will capture on h5. So you grab two pawns for the piece, you start an attack against the black king, and it's not all that clear how black should continue this. The g5 pawn is hanging. If you go bishop to h6, then even rook to e6 is possible. Uh, white will have an excellent game here. So this is uh, th this was in the position for Fabi, but I believe uh, since Fabi already lost two games, he doesn't want to over push it, and uh, maybe he doesn't trust himself to, to to play a move like this. So instead, he played queen to c4, which is also a very good move. And now Gukash goes queen to b7 again, puts pressure on the b2 pawn. Fabi plays b4, gets the pawn out of harm's way, and now pawn to e6, forever getting rid of that weakness on e7. Uh, rook to b1 by Fabi, and now queen to d7. Fabi repeats, rook b to e1, we have queen to b7, rook to b1, and now queen to d7. Uh, Gukash offers a draw, basically if Fabi repeats rook to e1, then we will have a draw by threefold repetition. And here Fabi decided that uh, he needs to play on. He played a3, and the game now continues, and this gives Gukash a whole new idea on how to activate the rook on a8, because like we said, you can't go to b8, so he plays a5. And this is... Uh, uh, the start of, uh, of uh, incredibly precise moves by, by both players. So here, okay, of course he wants to open up the A file, we have knight to A4, going for that C5 square, and now uh, you can capture on B4, also knight to B6 is a possibility, just forking your queen and the rook. So here, queen to D8, uh, guarding B6, and now B captures on A5. Uh, we have rook captures on a5 by Gukash and knight to c5. Fabi gets his knight to this beautiful active c5 square, but now Gukash just plays queen to d5, and he asks Fabi, what do you play here? Uh, and uh, it's not it's not easy to find a move here, because if Fabi trades queens, for example, queen captures on d5, c captures, the rook is attacked, you have to move the rook back. Now bishop captures on c5, and you will pick up the a3 pawn, for example, d captures, rook captures on a3, or even better, rook captures on c5, and um, Gukesh will be up a pawn, and with uh, material traded down, chances are that Fabi will lose this game, or, you know, maybe with perfect play he can save it. So Fabi says, all right, I, I'm gonna lose a pawn either way, so at least let's keep the queens on the board, let's keep the game uh, complicated, maybe I can uh, go for some sort of an attack. And he goes back, queen to e1, now you know that once the knight moves, maybe you can go after the h5 pawn, maybe you can open up the black king. So here, rook captures on a3, Gukesh accepts the pawn, 
and rook to d1 now, adding more uh, defense to this d4 pawn. We have rook f to a7 now with access to the a2 square attacking the queen. You can also play rook to a1 if you want to trade rooks, put pressure on the back rank. And now finally we have g4 by Fabi. Chasing away the knight from uh, from f5, we have h captures and g5 uh, for h captures and g4, and now knight to h6, putting pressure on this g4 pawn, and now bishop to g3. Uh, now you can maybe move the king, maybe you can bring the rook into the attack, maybe something good will happen. But here, rook is just uh, completely opens up the position. He plays e5, and now. Fabi is without a move basically. Uh, now the, the attack on the g4 pawn is opened up, uh, uh, the attack on the d4 pawn is happening. You, you can never capture on e5, if you, if you capture here you just blunder a knight. Uh, so uh, what can Fabi play here? Fabi, what, what he could play is knight to h2, but it's not all that great. Yes, your g4 pawn is nicely defended, uh, but now just rook a1, you attack the rook and it doesn't really matter how white replies to this, black's position is just winning. For example, if queen e1, you go after the rook, we can, we can happily trade here. Captures, captures, and just bishop captures on c5. White can never recapture as the queen on d1 would hang. So instead, after this e5 move, Fabi says, all right, I have one more idea that I can try, and that is knight captures on e5. Fabi gives up a piece uh, to clear, uh, to clear uh, some uh, squares in front of the black king to go for the attack. Uh, but uh, Gukesh just plays it to perfection. F captures on e5, we have rook captures on e5, and now uh, it seems like uh, Fabi is breaking through, it seems like the attack is happening, but there is one move that Gukesh can play uh, that forces Fabi to resign the game. So feel free to pause the video here and try to find the only move that wins the game for Gukesh uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on realizing that you are up material and if your opponent wants to trade queens, that's exactly what you should do. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is bishop captures on g4. This is what Gukesh played and now there really isn't uh, a, a move for Fabi here. Uh, the problem is you can't trade queens. If you trade queens, queen captures, knight captures, rook captures, uh, you already sacrificed material. You're down a full rook, of course you cannot play this, this is instant resign. So after bishop captures on g4, Fabi played queen to d2, he keeps the queens on the board, still attacks the Gukesh queen and goes after the g5 pawn, it seems incredibly scary. But Gukesh shows that there is nothing to worry about and uh, there are many ways to win the game here. Uh, Gukesh goes for the, uh, for the bravest attempt and that is queen to f3. And now Gukesh is saying, I'm just gonna play bishop to h3 and checkmate your king. How are you stopping this? Uh, and okay, Fabi has one capture that he can go for, queen captures on g5, uh, but that's not really the, the greatest one. Uh, he played rook captures on g5, because if queen captures, you just block with rook to g7, and now everything is attacking the white king. There's really nothing here. If you capture on h6, uh, your rook is hanging on d1. Let's not forget about that. Queen captures, king g2, now bishop to f3, check, and you get checkmated. King h3, queen to h1 with check, and of course, that's it. Bishop h2, queen g2, check, uh, king to h4 and now queen captures on h2 will be a very very forced uh, checkmate in line. So after queen to f3 uh, we have uh, rook captures on g5 by Fabi but now again just rook to g7 we have rook to e1 and now we have bishop to h3. Gook is not interested in, in anything Fabi is doing he's just going for checkmate and now Fabi the only way for Fabi to defend this is to move the bishop so the rook controls the g2 square. Here Fabi plays bishop to d6 but other moves really don't help. Uh, again, Gukesh finds the absolute cleanest way to end the game. Bishop captures on d6, rook captures on g7 with check, king captures and queen to g5 check now, king to h7 and now knight to e4, hoping to get some knight to f6 action in, uh, but Gukesh just ends the game on the spot. He plays queen captures on e4, sacrifices his queen, and it was in this position on move 45 that Fabiano Caruana resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here. Uh, Fabi is down too much material and if the queen is accepted then Gukesh has the very simple rook to a1 check and look at this, the bishop pair from hell doing uh, one hell of a job here, uh, there, there is nowhere for the king to move. Once you give up all of your pieces then it will be checkmate with rook capture sunny one and that's uh, basically it. that's why Fabio resigned the game. So after queen captures on e4, we can see it once again in slow motion. Look at this, queen captures on e4, Fabio resigns, Gukesh is on 8 out of 8. This is incredible stuff. Uh, it's, um, uh, you know, people say that it's silly to even talk about uh, 
uh, rating performances with perfect scores because who is an 8 out of 8 here? I, I, I haven't checked, but he could be like a 3300 rating performance. I don't know. It's, I mean, inc incredible stuff. But, I mean, perfect score <laughs> after 8 games, after facing Fabiano Coruana. Uh, it is definitely something I haven't expected. I, I know he's been having like an incredible tournament. He's been approaching every game. Uh, with such ingenuity, he's been very, very original in his preparation, going for lines that Carlson and Dubov play, which are incredibly sharp and incredibly tactical. And, uh, I mean, it's just, okay, I thought he's on 7 out of 7, he had a good run, now he has black against Fabi. If he fights well, okay, maybe he can get a draw, but getting a win here and going on 8 out of 8, uh, with 3 more rounds in the Olympia, there, there, there actually, actually exists a possibility for him finishing on 11 out of 11. I, I, of course, it feels like you might be jinxing it, but, uh, I mean, he just beat Fabi with black after, I mean, in round 8 of the Olympia. He's an 8 out of 8. It, it is a possibility. It's definitely a possibility. I mean, there, there's no greater opponent than Fabi here in the Olympia. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed it. Really incredible stuff. I can't, um, you know, stop praising Gukes, but... Uh, I mean, he, he's been playing such such incredible chess that I'm sure you guys um, uh, agree that, uh, you know, it's uh, it's not misplaced. Uh, and if you guys are interested in the, in the, in the uh, sorry about it being uh, so small, there are still 39 players uh, on the, uh, on the uh, FIDE, uh, only 2,700 players. Uh, so you can see that Carlson, okay, is still uh, in the top. Uh, but Lukesh uh, has jumped all the way to number 20. He's currently number 20 on the live ratings list. He has earned 30 rating points uh, since uh, the, the last uh, count, uh, which is just incredible. You can see how difficult it is to actually gain rating points. You can see that everyone's either on zero, not playing, or uh, on minus. Uh, and uh, well, okay, there, there's Dag. Dag is doing very well. He's on plus 13 and a half. But other than that, no one is in the plus double digits uh, except um, except Lukas. 30 points when you're over 2700. That's uh, not something that happens. Gukesh, uh, uh, Alireza Firja had an incredible run when he broke the 2800 barrier. I think he also won some 20 something points, but other than that, I haven't seen that in a very, very long time. Uh, so, yeah, okay, enough praising. There are still more games to cover and still more games for Gukesh to be won. Uh, but, I mean, uh, I believe the praise was well deserved. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game and a little bit of extra info regarding the Olympiad. If you guys uh, really want to know, uh, India 2 has defeated the United States uh, in the match. Uh, so I uh, hope you guys uh, enjoyed that as well. Booker won on board 1 and I believe also on board 4. Uh, there was a, a decisive result. I haven't checked yet, but I can check like really, really quickly. So let me just uh, do this. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, yeah, Gukesh uh, won on board one, uh, Sarin uh, drew against Taronyan, uh, Pragyananda drew against Wesley So, and uh, Ranak Sadvani defeated Lenier Dominguez Perez. Uh, so, in incredible, incredible run for India, too, who are definitely in contention for winning the entire thing. Uh, so, yeah, once again, really hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Um, uh, I would like to thank Braxton Reynolds, David Kimura, Nar uh, Natarajan uh, Ringsami. Uh, Who Boobies uh, and Joshua Hadley for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the Olympiad uh, until it finishes. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.